Hi there, I'm Kim, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Faced with a life or death question, how to feed the planet without destroying the planet? Could meat grown in a lab be the answer? A reminder of why it's always good to spell check before you get permanently inked. Getting muscled out for getting muscled up. Why one man in Israel is being silenced. And a cold concert in the Italian Alps. How one musician is bringing icy music to the world. Love a hamburger, but also love the environment? Well, this next story is for you. Scientists around the world are scrambling to produce lab-grown meat, which they predict will one day outstrip demand for real meat. They've cracked the technology, and as soon as the Food and Drug Administration signs off, which they're likely to do, it will be on the shelves. Not convinced? Watch this. A single nugget. It looks like chicken, it fries like chicken, and it tastes... I think it tastes like chicken. And in a way, it is chicken, but it didn't come from a chicken. It came from this lab. We're working with the same cells that are present in the animal body. No chemicals. No chemicals. This San Francisco startup is just one of the companies around the world competing to make great tasting meat grown in a lab. Cells are taken from an animal. Next, the tissue is cut into minuscule pieces to separate the muscle fibers and cells. Eventually, the cells become single strands of muscle tissue, then... From one small piece of tissue, this pioneering technique can produce more than a trillion strands. When all these little pieces of muscle are layered together, we get exactly the same thing we started with. The livestock sector is a massive contributor to global warming, responsible for more greenhouse gases than all the emissions from all the cars, trucks, trains and planes in the whole world combined. But that's just the beginning. On average, a quarter pounder beef burger drains around 1,695 litres of water, which is a problem considering the Earth's water resources are already dangerously squeezed. We're eating food that's causing our soil to rot, causing our animals to suffer, causing our oceans to acidify. The food system doesn't work. So if we can cut back the number of animals while increasing the amount of meat they produce, then we can continue to have our cake, or in this case burgers, and eat them too. Okay, let's speak now to Henning Steinfeld, who is the head of the UN Food and Agriculture's Livestock Analysis Team based in Rome. First off, Henning, why is the livestock sector such a massive contributor to greenhouse gases? Well, it is, it is using a lot of biomass and it is losing a lot of, of land. Not only uh, partial land, which is about one quarter of the uh, surface of the planet, but also a lot of cropland, which is used to produce feed. So the extent to which livestock, in particular meat, uses uh, resources in terms of land, but also biomass in terms of nutrients, nitrogen is a big thing. All this adds up to quite a large um, impact on climate change. There's something specific about ruminants because their stomachs, um, because they have the capability of using roughage, something that humans can't eat in, uh, their, in their feed, uh, they also emit a lot of methane from their stomachs, which is a particular feature of ruminants. So cattle and sheep and goats are um, ruminants, as we call them. And the FDA is set to sign off on lab-grown meat soon, and once the pricing comes down, do you think that uh, meat grown in laboratories could then be part of the solution to the problem? I think it will be part of a solution. Um, of course, in in rich countries, but also growingly in, the, in developing countries and poor countries, you're having a, a trend towards rather unhealthy diets, which include a lot of salt and sugar, but also a lot of fat and also animal products. So I think that uh, there will be a trend towards more healthy diets. And for people who currently eat large amounts of meat, for example, 
that it's a good way to actually improve their health and also benefits for the planet. So I think there a consumer shift, particularly in in consumer segments that are um, rich or, or at least middle class. In these areas, there will be or there should be a reduction so as to have a healthy diet and also to reduce the environmental impact. Thanks for that, Henning. OK, let's take a look now at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. OK, team, here's some advice. Always spell check before getting inked. Pop star Ariana Grande posted a picture to Instagram of this new tattoo of Japanese characters. She thought it said Seven Rings. That's the name of her new single about to be released. But her helpful followers were quick to point out the actual translation means Japanese-style barbecue grill. Whoops. She's now deleted the post after the social media storm and apparently has added to the tattoo to give it a different meaning. Justin Bieber, I guess like almost every other celebrity on the planet, now has a fashion line. It's called Drew and the first range has just been dropped. And it looks pretty, well, beige, quite literally. People have been quick to point out that it looks similar to Kanye West's also very beige line from 2016, which was criticized by those who immediately pointed out that it was a very expensive way to wear what looked like rags. Now, rats, in my opinion, can make very cute pets, but in the wild, they threaten wildlife, particularly the delicate ecosystem of the Galapagos Islands. So there, a conservation group is deploying a small army of drones to fight a rat invasion. Of species are one of the major drivers of extinction and they, for the last 500 years they've been responsible for around 80% uh, of all extinctions. As such the eradication of invasive species on islands provides a permanent solution to be able to deal with invasive species. Requerimos eh, proteger un número mayor de especies que en otros lugares, eh, aves por ejemplo, reptiles como eh, en este caso iguanas. Now, glow up, getting them gains, muscling up, whatever you want to call it, getting in shape is usually a good thing. But it's backfired for one man in Israel who's now being silenced for his sport. Here's the story. Ibrahim Masri has been calling Muslims to prayer in Israel for nearly 15 years. But he's now being silenced for his sport. The sole reason for being fired because of my participation in bodybuilding, taking part in this kind of sport is considered as a taboo and not permitted religiously. Israel's interior ministry is removing him as chief muezzin in the northern city of Akka, ruling competing is incompatible with his religious role because of his inappropriate dress. Firstly, that was an unjust decision. As an individual, I'm known as a religious person and a friend to all the people. It is known that I'm the only Arab who's qualified to raise the name of Akka and the Arab society. The 46-year-old has been lifting weights since he was young and doesn't see a contradiction between his sport and religion. The religion of Islam encourages any individual to practice sport. The Prophet himself once said, a strong believer is better and dearer to Allah than a weak one, and both are good. 
Locals say they will miss hearing his voice. In all Acre, you won't find a Muezzin and a man like him. This is not good, either for him or for Acre. Masri has apologised and is appealing the decision, saying he's been unfairly muscled out. OK, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. Sure, it's been a year of massive data privacy scandals, bad news and fake news, but Facebook is still growing and it's making more money than ever. Facebook says its revenue soared 30% to $16.9 billion in the final three months of last year. That's up more than 60% from the previous year. And the number of people using it monthly rose 9% to $2.32 billion. A mystery illness in Cuba strikes again. The mystery illness that only seems to affect foreign diplomats. Canada has announced it's pulling out half its embassy staff in Cuba after another diplomat has fallen ill. That's the 14th Canadian to have symptoms like dizziness, nausea and mild traumatic brain injury. Last year, the US State Department claimed there's been some kind of sonic attack on their staff after 26 Americans fell ill with the same symptoms. Cuba denies any involvement. If you have an irrational fear of sharks, well, it's never irrational, they are scary, but it's increasingly unlikely that you'll fall prey to an attack. New statistics say the number of shark attacks around the world fell about a quarter last year. There were only four fatalities worldwide, down from the long-term average of six. The US and Australia had the most attacks, and now, while you might want to take a dip in an ocean to celebrate, it is potentially bad news for sharks. Fewer sharks could be the result of an unhealthy ocean. I'll be warned, this footage is frightening, but somehow everyone survived. A Boston teenager was behind the wheel when he crashed head-on into that big rig. Some brave strangers were able to pull the 18-year-old from his vehicle and he's recovering in hospital. Incredible. And now for some cool music. You might have seen impressive ice sculptures before, but one man in Italy has made instruments out of ice and even started his own orchestra. And no, they don't play Ice Ice Baby. It's a pretty chilled out performance. They are difficult to play, not because they are strange per se, but because you have to get used to be playing at a temperature of at least minus 12, with your fingers that risk freezing all the time, and the strings which continuously go out of tune. So tuning is also very difficult. The first instrument that I built, uh, this giant three meter long bass, I tighten the wires, I begin to pluck on the wires, the sound comes out. That's when I realized that, uh, you know, that ice would make sound. The ice is very fragile and sensitive to, you know, the pressure of the, of the strings. And so you have to get right near the edge of where it's going to blow up to get the sound. cuter than a panda. Lots of cute pandas. With only four days to go until the Chinese New Year, China's panda breeding and research base started celebrations by bringing out all of their pandas born in 2018. 31 of them. There's less than 2,000 in the world today and I mean look, the world needs more, I'm telling you. Well that's it from the Newsfeed team. You'll find us 24-7 on Twitter and YouTube. Stay with us, we'll see you tomorrow.